no matter how talented mm. you were, no matter how hard you worked, you know, there, it was just a non-existent, you know, job opportunity mm. after we graduated. I'm going to work in the men's work capital of the world. You know, I'm American. Hi. Ciao. I miss you. Hi. I miss you so much. Hi. So for those who don't know me, um, I do work for Timberland based in Switzerland. Um, and we design globally. So we design for um, Asia, North America, and then also yeah. for Europe. So um, that's a lot in terms of, you know, having to know the consumers in all these different areas. Um, you know, obviously me being from the U.S., I know a lot about the North American consumer. Um, but, uh, you know, this is why we travel to these places. This is why we do trend reports. This is why it's nice to have people like you in my network from Asia so that yeah. we can have a true cool. insight on what's going on in every region and what, you know, different regions want in terms of the consumer and, and marketing to that specific consumer. Well, let's just start from my education, actually. So um, sure. I went to Philadelphia University in Philadelphia, obviously. Um, and I graduated in 2013 with a bachelor's in fashion design. Um, from there, after I graduated, I was like most graduates, not really knowing what to do next. And then in 2014, you know, um, I, I didn't have a permanent job. Uh, to be honest, during 2013, before I graduated, um, my grandfather fell victim to murder. And because of that, I cope with things very differently. Um, I cope with things by being creative or, you know, just working hard and yeah. finding positive solution in, in things. So when my grandfather was murdered, I used that, you know, that rest of that summer of 2013 to create my own brand. And from that, um, you know, I was just really inspired going to different fashion shows in Philly, in New York, and just really gaining my network as a fresh, you know, graduate, not knowing what the heck mm. is going on in the world. I mean, I had internships, <laughs> you know, when I was in college at Calvin Klein in New York and, um, wow. you know, things like that. But I hadn't had a full time job after graduating. So I was really focused on you know just really going after my brand and meeting different people yeah. which was an amazing experience um really really great from there um 2014 i was working also at pbh in new york and that yeah, brand great. um specifically um i was working with tommy hilfiger calvin klein um wow. and because of the climate of the um, of the organization it was a temporary to permanent position so um my managers were the best like they, they knew that um the hit count wasn't that high to bring me on, but they really wanted mm -hmm. me. So at that point, they were just sending me around the office, like introducing me to directors in different categories. Like, mm -hmm. hey, this is Alicia. Do you have hit count? Hey, hey, hey. Um, but I feel like in life, we get a no. And sometimes that no is for our benefit. And I didn't know at the time that there not being hit count for me at PVH at that time yeah. was going to be a blessing in disguise. Um, fast forward to um, September or the end of August of that year, I went to London and Paris, my first time going abroad. Um, and in that time, you know, I was already thinking, I want to move overseas. I don't want to be here anymore. <laughs> I was just so, I didn't know how to get over there. And um, the other job that I was working at the time, um, Business Development Center um, for Women um, Entrepreneurs, one of my managers yeah. there, she kind of encouraged me to you know, look at schools, look at jobs, however I can find a way um, to get overseas. So during my vacation to Paris and London, um, I set up um, an interview or like an open house with one of the schools in London. Because yeah. that, that was my dream. I'm like, I'm a menswear designer. I'm going to work in the menswear capital of the world. You know, I'm American. So that's what we think yeah. of London, you know. <laughs> so I was like, this is the dream. So um, I actually went on a vacation with one of my best friends, um, Ismay. Um, and I kind of branched off from her and then I went to my open house and like met with them, et cetera. Um, but when I got back to the U S you know, um, I saw an application for, or a scholarship competition for Domus Academy in Italy. Shout out to Domus. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, okay, so the deadline for this scholarship comes before the deadline for me applying for London college of fashion. So I applied mm. to that first, um, at Domus Academy. And before I can even apply to the school in London, um, it was crazy. Like, I found out that I won. And not only did I won, I won first place. And I'm like, what the heck? Like, a girl from West Philly, like, you know, competing with people who are global, people from Asia, people yeah. from Europe. And this is like, you know, my only first time being abroad was going on that trip to Paris and London. So I hadn't had, like, a wide spectrum of the yeah. world at that age. I think I was... 
23, I want to say. Yeah, yeah, I was 23. Um, so I was just overjoyed the fact that I won first place. I remember um, like crying to my boss, like, I didn't, I didn't think I was good enough. <laughs> so that was October. I found out that I won that scholarship. And at that point, I had three months to move out of the U.S. And I was like, yes. And it was so funny because I didn't believe it. You know, I was speaking to like the, the coordinator at the school. And I was like, you mean to tell me I can move in three months? Like, I don't have to wait to the next the next year because most of the grad schools were like you know you need to right. wait to the following semester to start so i yeah. was going through stuff personally and then like career-wise i felt stagnant in new york and philly and i was like i'm moving in three months like and that's what happened <laughs> and then january 2015 i moved i met you my favorite person and um that was just an amazing experience for me because um i was the only american in that program there was about 10 or 11 of us and everybody mm. represented so many different backgrounds from different parts of asia to russia right. shout out to kate um yeah <laughs> shout out to pre to canada azar like it was so many different nationalities and in that you know you understand in that one year how close right. we became because for all of us, we were all in a position where we dropped our lives and moved over to another country with no family, right. no friends. And we were all each other had, you know, from cooking with each other, you know, to just b really building a nice, diverse culture community, which to this day, yeah. six years later, means so much to me. And the fact that, <laughs> you know, you're still one of my greatest friends and, you know, I traveled with you to see your, your hometown in Thailand. Yeah. Like, I really... You came I think to Thailand. In this industry, mm. people think that, you know, to be a fashion designer, you need to be, like, you know, Devil Wears Prada, be, like, this jerk to people. And, like, but there's so <laughs> much posiness and, you know, human-to-human -human connections that you get in the design process. And I think that's something really important to highlight within the industry itself. Um, you don't have to come out of your character and be like this spiteful, yeah, egotistical yeah. person to get a hit. You know, it's strength in numbers. And, you know, I'm really, I really truly believe in collaboration and keeping connections and networking. And I think that's how you supporting can Supporting each other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think it's really important to be like supporting each other because like nowadays, people really like getting a lot of harder and harder about like trying to find a job in Thailand or like wherever they want to be. So the best part of like being in Milan is about the connection, you know, like nine countries. Do you remember that? So we, we met a lot of friends and then we, we made like, yeah, super international. And then we still keep in touch till now today. Yeah, I would love to talk to you about your previous job. Because, like, after you graduated from the Moose Academy, you went back to, to USA for work. Woo! Where do I start? So, all right. So, <laughs> I moved to Italy in 2015. That program was only supposed to be a year. So, we graduated yeah. in 2015. And like you said, so we wanted, so my class, we all wanted to stay in Milan. Like, the reality of the situation was the fact that in 2015, the fashion industry job the job community was just non-existent no matter how talented mm. you were no matter how hard you work you know there it was just a non-existent you know job opportunity mm. after we graduated um mm. but we found a way to hustle and like stay longer um after i graduated december 2015 i joined a project with stone island and bmw group mm. and i mm -hmm. stayed on and that's how i was able to stay in italy a bit longer i was working on a project with them where i made outerwear um which was a very interesting collaboration because we were catering to that automobile world and then also merging it with design, um, which was a great experience with Stone Island. I really, they were like, they welcomed me hands in. And then, um, you know, that wasn't a permanent job. Um, obviously, it was like a freelance um, position. And, you know, as I was speaking with the, the owner of, um, Stone, the founder of uh, Stone Island, he gave me advice. He's like, you know, Alicia, you're very talented. Um, unfortunately due to the market here in italy there's nothing really substantial that we can offer you at that yeah. time i had um i applied for a job in the u.s at reebok and when i applied for that i kind of was like i don't know if i want to go back to america right now because at that time <laughs> for my fellow americans in the chat at that time america it was just going crazy like in terms of police brutality it was also right. an election yeah. year for trump it was just a lot going so, on, and I, yeah. was, I was really sad. I, I had so many emotions. I was really happy about, oh, my God, I got a job at Reebok. What? 
But then at the same time, I was so sad at the thought of moving back to the U.S. and the climate that it was in. But, you know, I put my big girl pants on. I was like, my sadness right now sounds like privilege. How am I crying about going to um, a, a, an amazing opportunity? So I moved to the U.S. in August, and I started my job in a new city. I moved to Boston. Never been to Boston. It was my first time there. And I moved to Boston um, like three days after moving from Italy. And I started my job at, um, I was at, I was specifically in SLD. So SLD is sports licensing division. Yeah. Um, so I was working on sport product, which was amazing because I love sports. I love basketball. I grew up as yeah. a cheerleader. It's just something that was just innate in me. I <laughs> love being surrounded. And I love, you know, I just, I just love that kind of vibe of a company. So I, I enjoyed myself. And I was also welcomed with, you know, my manager was amazing. Um, my manager and the team that I was working with just had my back. Um, so working there was great because, you know, we had all the perks of going to different, you know, basketball games, baseball games, sitting in the box office. And then actually I learned how to play hockey, <laughs> which was so funny because I love, I love ice skating. I love skating, like rollerblading, yeah. but because I was designing for, um, NHL, which is like the national hockey league in America, um, mm. because I was designing for that professional team, we as designers needed to relate to them. So we needed to learn how to play hockey. We needed to mm. like understand the movement so we can understand what cuts we needed to put in, et cetera. <laughs> so that was a fun, fun, fun time. Like yeah. shout out to Michael, my manager and Eric. They were amazing. Like I had a blast with them. Um, it was such a great time, but you know, um, that year, 2016, um, you know, we found out that, you know, a lot of companies, a lot of global companies and corporate, they're just, it's, it's business, you know? If someone buys out another company, then, you know, they're going to decide to take those designers or not. So at that time, um, I was working for Adidas, but at the Reebok yeah. headquarter in Boston. Adidas headquarters is in Portland. So mm -hmm. because of that, um, we, we had a new president and that president came in and was like, okay, we're going to separate this. Reebok is moving to Seaport. And um, Seaport is a district in Boston, which is like downtown to really cater to the creative community. And they were like, yeah. the SLD, the sports licensing division, you guys got to move over to Portland. But it wasn't <laughs> as black and white as that. It wasn't like, oh, you guys all have a job and you guys are all moving. But I think they realized like later down the line that some people in my team, like my manager had a great connection with the NHL. Like that's a professional league. And he had a great uh, connection with them. So you can't just you can't just fire these people and bring in new people and expect to have that same cozy relationship. As I right. mentioned before, the industry is also about relationships that you have with people. So mm -hmm. if a professional league like NHL is having already a good time and a good relationship working with my design manager, you can't just up and be like, oh, we're replacing you. So at that time, you know, it felt like everybody was losing their job. So in that moment, my managers really rallied behind me when I found out. So with Timberland, um, I was in connection with um, a guy who worked at, T at Timberland when I was living in Italy. I did a project for Timberland yeah, five Timberland. years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you remember that project, right? So long. Yeah, yeah that was like five <laughs> years ago. That's fun. Which is so crazy because I did that project for Timberland. You know, we had to make the video and do all this stuff, which yeah. was so fun. So I stayed in contact with him throughout my journey. Like when I was working for Stone Island, he would send me mm -hmm. like articles. Like, he just became like a mentor kind of. He would send me articles and about design and just will be like, Alicia, you should do this. Then like, it's so weird how timing works because when we found out that we were all basically losing our jobs, he reached out to me <laughs> and was like, he reached out to me and was like, um, Alicia, if you want to move back overseas, um, we're going to be posting jobs soon. Um, oh, but he introduced the conversation like, 